Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the first 2013 episode of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some quick security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security aficionado, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode that technically started on the week of December 31st, 2012. Today's short episode will have a strong Microsoft theme since the biggest security stories all came from the local software company in the Seattle area. However, I'll throw in a few extra stories and one update to a previous story at the end of the episode as well. Let's start with the biggest story of the week, which is a critical zero-day vulnerability in Internet Explorer. Late last week, a security vendor named FireEye released a blog post about a previously undiscovered flaw in Internet Explorer that people were already exploiting in the wild. Long story short, FireEye found that the website belonging to the Council of Foreign Relations, a pretty big uh, think tank website, had been infected and booby-trapped with some special JavaScript. And this JavaScript leveraged a previously undiscovered use-after-free vulnerability in Internet Explorer. This is a class of vulnerability that uh, attackers can essentially corrupt memory, and if they're smart enough, they can leverage this memory corruption in a way to execute arbitrary code on your computer. So if you visited the site with the wrong version of Internet Explorer, you'd immediately get infected with some malware. Over the weekend, specifically I believe it was on December 31st, Microsoft released a security advisory confirming this zero-day vulnerability in Internet Explorer. Uh, they also explained that the flaw only affects Internet Explorer 6 through 8. It does not affect Internet Explorer 9 or 10, so if you use those versions, you're fine. On top of that, Monday of this week, Microsoft released what they call a fix-it workaround, a small workaround which will actually uh, mitigate or prevent attackers from exploiting this specific flaw. So if you're an Internet Explorer 6 through 8 user, you should go out immediately and download and install this fix-it if you haven't already. And do know this is really a temporary mitigation, though it will prevent the flaw they found on this particular website. It is not the full patch, so I do fully expect Microsoft to release a more full patch of this problem in the future. But that's not the only emergency update from Microsoft this week. On Thursday, Microsoft released a second security advisory warning about a fraudulent certificate from the Turk Trust CA or Certificate Authority. Certificate authorities are essentially third-party uh, organizations that we trust to uh, validate the authenticity of the digital certificates we use to secure many online communications. Microsoft found that Turk Trust had somehow issued at least three fraudulent certificates that attackers were actually using to spoof Google.com and other Google-related and YouTube-related domains. So this is a significant problem that attackers can actually use to help spoof sites to do man-in-the-middle attacks or phishing or, or many other attacks like that. In any case, Microsoft has started to fix the issue. If you use uh, Windows, uh, some versions of Windows come with an automatic revoker for certificates, and they have updated their certificate revocation list to actually revoke the fraudulent certificates. And other browser vendors like Chrome have already followed and revoked the certificates as well. So hopefully you're using some sort of browser or operating system that will revoke these certificates automatically. If not, you should definitely check into that. Do know some older versions of Windows, like Windows XP, do need additional updates to get this automatic certificate revocation. In any case, this problem kind of illustrates something that's been happening a lot in our SSL and certificate communications. The whole idea of these secure SSL communications hinges on us being able to trust the digital certificates organizations use and publish uh, so that we can validate them. And all this hinges on third parties that actually verify and authenticate these certificates. But over the years with the Komodo breach, DigiNotar, 
Kotar and now Turk Trust, there's been many, many cases of us being unable to trust some of these third-party certificate issuers. So it'd be interesting to see how this problem evolves over the years and how CAs might change to avoid this issue and keep our trust. And the last story this week is, of course, the advance notification for Microsoft's regular monthly patch day. On the first Thursday of the month, they always tell us what to expect on the upcoming patch day. And this month, Microsoft told us to expect seven security bulletins, two of which they rate critical. The bulletins will correct flaws in Windows, uh, server software, Office, and the .NET framework. So, pretty important update. However, do notice that there was no specific IE update mentioned. So that zero day I mentioned before is not going to be fixed in this particular update, which isn't that big a surprise since it was just recently discovered. Now, of course, the Fix-It is out there, so the Fix-It will protect you. You should definitely use it. As an aside, do know that WatchGuard IPS has written signatures for the exploit that was found in the wild as well uh, because of our MAP partnership with Microsoft. So if you're a WatchGuard customer, our IPS system should catch this zero-day exploit. In any case, if you're a Windows administrator or a Microsoft product user, you should definitely follow along next Tuesday when Microsoft releases all their security updates. So that's it for the Microsoft theme stories, but let me quickly cover the two extras I talked about earlier. The first is kind of interesting to fellow gamers out there as it affects a very popular driver for a graphics card, specifically the NVIDIA device driver. Over the week, security researchers posted to a mailing list some proof of concept code for a pretty serious local security uh, flaw in the NVIDIA device drivers out there. Basically, if uh, an attacker has credentials on your system, so he has to have some sort of local or domain access to your system, he can leverage this flaw even as a guest to gain full system access to your, your computer, thus having full control of it. I won't go into detail on why the flaw works, but essentially it is a privilege escalation flaw because of the NVIDIA device driver. Now, from a severity level, this isn't that big a deal since it actually requires local access. But there's now proof of concept code out there, so it's a very good flaw for attackers to take advantage of to elevate their privilege if they don't have full system privileges in one of their remote attacks. Uh, what's also interesting about this flaw is apparently some of the researchers involved did report it to NVIDIA months ago, I believe they said in June, and have not gotten any response. So the full disclosure mailing list post with the proof of concept concept code was probably something to kind of pressure NVIDIA into fixing this security vulnerability. If you are a gamer out there and you do use an NVIDIA device, don't panic though. I don't think this really will be a highly exploited flaw by attackers. That said, I'd pay attention over the next few weeks because I suspect NVIDIA may release an update soon. Finally, just a real quick update for any developers, specifically web developers out there. If you're a web developer, you've probably heard of Ruby on Rails, and maybe you use it for your favorite web application. If you do use Ruby on Rails, do know that this week they released an update specifically to fix a pretty serious uh, SQL injection flaw within their framework. So this flaw could potentially affect many, many uh, websites and organizations that use Ruby on Rails. So if you're one of those people, definitely go patch it. Finally, let me end with a quick update to one of my previous stories. If you follow our podcast regularly, you probably remember me talking about a vulnerability that affected certain Samsung phones that use the Exynos chipset, phones like the Galaxy S3 or whatnot. Anyways, this week, Samsung did release a firmware update to fix that critical vulnerability. So if you're one of the Samsung users that is affected by that flaw, you should definitely update your phone's firmware as soon as possible. And thus ends our first episode of 2013. I hope you had a happy holiday and I'm glad to see you back. In any case, if you'd like more regular security story, be sure to follow us on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. You can also follow me on Twitter personally, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow the WatchGuard alias, at WatchGuardTech. As an aside, while we're talking about WatchGuard Security Week in review, remember, we're always interested in your feedback or your suggestions or just your questions or comments. If you have any feedback for us, be sure to post it in the comments section of our WatchGuard Security Center page or even our YouTube page if you prefer. We love to hear from you. In any case, thank you for watching. And as always, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.